it's cold. And I bet I know what you're thinking. He's saying to me, Efka, why don't you just, you could just shut that window right now. But I'm not going to. And you're wondering to yourself, why, why are you doing that? You could just, just not let the draft in. But I can't. Because today we're reviewing Inish. And Inish is a game of drafting. That is the worst joke I ever wrote. But it was all worth it, no matter how bad the jokes are, because Inish is a game that stands on its own. Well, it doesn't actually stand, it's a board game. It has no legs under it. Conceptually, I mean, gosh, just look at this cover. You might absolutely love it or hate it, but you sure as Che Guevara can't argue that this is a thing that's pretty unique as far as board game covers go. Oh, as long as we're talking Che Guevara, you should probably Google Jim Fitzpatrick, the artist of this thing. Yeah, just Google him. But most importantly, Inish comes from Matago, a publisher that have rocked HMS Cardboard Innovation on more than one occasion. And this game is about dudes and ladies on a map. And Matago has shown themselves to pretty much be the kings of area control skirmish games. And each title feels different and new and fresh. And you know what, Matago, you can rock my cardboard boat anytime. That sounded wrong. At the beginning of any review we do for any game, we like to tell you what the win conditions for a certain game are, because that gives you a framework and sort of box where to put all your ideas about that game as we're telling you about it. However, Innis is so odd and peculiar that a box becomes pretty much useless. Its win conditions are really hard to wrap your head around until you actually understand what's going on. In Inish, you will play one of four different but functionally identical Celtic groups of clans, and you will explore new territories, recruit new clans onto those territories, build citadels and sanctuaries, and enter the most passive-aggressive clashes designed in any game ever. To win a game of Inish, you have to have clans on six different territories or clans on territories that have a combined total of six different sanctuaries and this is the most nebulous one have clans in territories where you have more clans than other players have clans but the combined total of the other players clans has to be six did you get that? No, because actually it gets even more complicated than that. But more on that later, because now we're going to talk about drafting. And no, not Efka's lame window joke. Hey! Well, then, go on then, tell everybody how proud you are of that. Okay, you can keep talking. For those unfamiliar, drafting is a mechanism where you start with a hand of cards, take one and pass the rest on and immediately regret all of your life decisions, particularly the one that you have just made, because you've noticed that there's a card that would have worked really great with something that you've just given away. But that card is gone now, so you may as well take it anyway and stop someone else from getting that really great combo. But it wouldn't be a Matago game without innovation. And in this game, every time you receive a new hand of cards you add the ones that you've already drafted to it and then take one more meaning that you can dump out cards that you don't like anymore if you want to and if you think that makes the drafting any more forgiving well maybe but each turn of drafting has just as many decisions as the one before it every drafting game ever made has so many cards and if there is an expansion for that game it adds even more cards they rely on strategies that lie deep within the land of infinite card pools and often feel vague and abstract like a William S. Burroughs novel. Inish does not do that. Inish wants you to learn everything that is in the game. It does not play memory games with you. It does not want you to learn oblique strategies. It only has 17 cards, 13 if you're drafting with three or two players, and it wants you to learn exactly what they are and understand them and get to the point. And that's because these green cards that you get in Inish, they let you do everything in the game, whether you want to recruit new clans or explore new territories or build citadels or sanctuaries or instigate clashes all of these are on these green cards. But that doesn't mean the strategy is ever simple. As the game progresses, this swathe of tree-shaped territories will grow. And when you control the territory, you'll get one of these yellow cards, which will give you an extra action or ability that you can use. Even though there's not much variability, each turn manages to feel different and each game feels markedly distinguishable, which is quite a big feat. You haven't even told them about clashes. I know. 
Well, the clashes are kind of weird. And non-committal. They're kind of like a first date at a very loud nightclub. Do you wanna... Do you wanna dance, maybe? Yeah, sure. Uh, can we maybe do something else instead? Yeah, right. Clashes happen for a few reasons. Move into a territory with enemy clans, that's a clash. Unless your card specifically says it's not. And then there are cards that will say it's clashing time! Which is a little bit like it's clobbering time, but a little bit less fantastic. And then there's the clash, which is the systematic destruction of everyone involved. Unless everyone decides that actually it's not, at any point you can go, should we do this anymore? Should we just stop? And you quite often hear, no, I, I don't want to do it anymore, we can stop. But clashes isn't the only persnickety rule in Inish, and whilst clashes do work, there are other rules, whilst not necessarily odd, but they just bog the game down in unnecessary minutia. The tactical play at some point will just stop, whilst everyone is trying to figure out something weird, like the timings of maneuvers or whatever. And that's a shame, because at its heart, Inish is a fairly simple game. So its uniqueness comes at a cost, but you know what? I'd rather have something that's a little bit quirky than just run of the mill and bland. Here at NPI, we are not the biggest fans of Take That. I guess now it's time. If I told you not to edit that in, it's not fun. Say sorry, Efka. I'm really sorry, I won't do it again, I promise. Almost everything in Inish relies on Take That. It's a bit like a streamlined Tesla X that runs on the most inefficient fossil fuel possible, which probably, ironically, was mined in Scotland somewhere. Now we've spoken about the green cards that you get from drafting and the yellow cards that you get from controlling territories. What we haven't spoken about are the red cards, which are a bit like the other cards dipped into a pot of melted Take That CDs. Now, if you inherently hate Take That, I'm not going to pretend you're going to throw that all away and fall in love with this game. But there is something to be said for elegantly designed Take That. Every card works with each other card, and there is a reason for them. And that in itself is admirable. Matago is pretty famous for its men on map games, and I hear you asking right now, but is it better than Kemet? Is it better than Cyclades? Is it better than Giants? Actually, no one's really asking if it's better than Giants. Nobody's even played Giants. I know, it's not even that bad, really. You should try Giants. But, but, Inish is really unlike all those other games because Inish is not a strategy game. In Cyclades and Kemet, you're formulating a path to victory and following it through, whereas in Inish, you're mostly just reacting to what's happening right now. It is primarily a tactical game. It wants you to, to remain fluid. It wants you to remain ever vigilant as to what's going on and adapt to situations. It wants you to be like the leaf, Cora. And in that, Inish is a pretty significant departure from the previous titles. And it's certainly not for everyone. Everything, and I mean everything, from its eccentric artwork... To a very aggressive and manipulative nature. To take that mechanism... To wildly varying game times. To the necessity of everybody on the table being with it and understanding the subtleties of the game. All these things will... Divide people. It is essentially a giant psychedelic jar of Marmite. You will either love it... Or hate it. And the best we can do is try and help you make up your own mind. And if it helps, we, we really, really, really like, like it. it. Ow! There's a bookcase here. I really hurt my groin. Did you know that there's no such thing as Celtic clans or culture? It's just a word for a loosely associated group of languages. How weird is that? It stretches all the way down to Portugal. But if you would like to be part of a clan and can't be, you can always join the No Pun Included clan by clicking the subscribe thing on the side or below. And don't forget to leave us a comment about what you actually think about Inish. Even though you might haven't played it, you might be excited about it or you might just dread the idea of ever touching it. I would love to know and so would Elaine. So leave us a comment below and leave us a lot of love. Bye bye. <laughs>